All right, let's do this. Let's do this thing, girl. Dragnail and welcome back to Seduce Me. So we will be doing the final route of this game, and that is going to be Suzu's route. And uh, I I know you guys wanted me to do the bad endings for Seduce Me too, but I I want just a little heads up. Like I want to do the bad endings for you because you recommended it to me, but just a little. Little off the side question. I'll make a. I'll probably make a video about this question for tomorrow. Maybe I don't know for sure. But since usually my seduce me videos get a lot, um get a lot more comments and stuff, I figured I could just place it here. Since it is the month of October and it is spoopy month, I was thinking that since I upload only weekly now, I can uh, uh just play some scary games for the rest of the month of October. Or I can just do the bad endings for Seduce Me. I could, what I can do is, since it's October, the spooky month, I can play scary games for you, whatever you recommend. And I can do the bad endings for Seduce Me next month in November. But it's up to you guys. I mean, whatever you guys want to do. I mean, yeah, completely up to you. But, uh, just put in the comments below if you want me to play scary games for the rest of this month or you just want me to get to the boys bad endings after this so i can know for next week uh yeah with that being said uh we're gonna start scissors route all right then okay we're gonna go hang with the friends and then gonna talk about spicy food and such so suzu please you need to teach me your ways how to handle the spicy foods you just need to eat spicy food all the time. You gotta tame your mouth. Uh, I've tried that, trust me. I hate spicy food for the rest of my life. Tame your mouth? Really, Suzu? What Naomi said. Sounds difficult. Anyways, after the mall, what do you want to do? We could go to the Pink Lady Cafe and chill out with Kay. I'm sure she'd love the company. But we have to stop by the arcade. They have this new game out called Orion. You get to control this guy named Isaku, and you're part of the rebel forces, and you get to shoot things, and there's robots, and... Sheesh, we get it, Suzu, we get it. We'll go to the arcade. Which one first, though? You know how popular Kay is. She'll be swamped with customers later in the day. I'd rather go in the late afternoon. She has better options during the last hour of the cafe. So basically, after the arcade? You figured me out so quickly, Patterson. What did I tell you about using my last name? Well, let's go to... We went to the cafe for Naomi, so let us go to the arcade with Suzu. Some nice music, yo. I said yo again. Please, somebody slap me. So we headed to the mall and walked around for a good amount of time before driving out to Moonfall Arcade. As weird as the name sounded, the arcade was one of the best arcades in the city. Kids and teenagers lined the games, watching the players at the consoles that, as they anxiously waited to have their turns. I would be like that too if I was at an arcade waiting for my turn. Oh, oh, there it is, there it is! 
Suzu grabbed Naomi and me by the hands before dragging us to a section to a section of the arcade where a bunch of kids had gathered in awe and excitement. In the middle of the crowd was a large game with two joystick platforms and a screen that flashed name Orion every other second. In the background of the screen, a holographic playfield glimmered b uh, before us, revealing a neo-futuristic futuristic battlefield and an enemy robot charging red at the camera. I have to applaud to Christopher for this music because it's really awesome. Really awesome. This is the game you were excited about? Yes, Naomi. It looks really cool. That's right. And I'm going to play it so hard I'll beat the game in one shot. Okay. Susa smirked and looked at me, hoping that I would join her as I usually did for partner games. I looked at Naomi who merely rolled her eyes, crossed her arms, and gave me the okay nod. I grinned before nodding to Zuzu, who cheered in joy. Woohoo! Alright, let's do this! Let's do this thing, girl! It took us a good half hour before we were able to step up to the platforms. The point of the game was to beat the government and restore freedom to the general public. We put... We played as Rubbles in a robot, and the game quickly became a smash and bash game versus multiple enemy robots. Playing with Suzu was always an adventure. We both knew what our strength and strengths and weaknesses were, so it was easy to collaborate with each other. It wasn't long before we got into the swing of the game and were beating enemies like crazy. By the time we got to the boss, we were unstoppable. It was so refreshing to beat the boss and put our three letter code names in the high score list. And that is how you game. We are unstoppable, Anderson. Hell yes, yeah, Suzu. Fist bump. Whoop. Suzu gave me a large smile, which made me smile back. I was happy to be able to hang out and have fun with my friends like this. I felt free from worries or responsibilities. It was something I loved. We eventually lost track of the time and wound up staying longer than we expected, making us unable to stop at the cafe before going home to dress for the housewarming party. So we drove back. So Naomi and Suzu picked up clothes and other necessi necessities from their house before driving back to the mansion. Alright, so we only have one option here basically, and that's the arcade, so let's go to the arcade. Whoop! Whoop whoop! To be honest, truthfully, I will go to the arcade any day. I love to play games. Any new games to try out, I will try them. I don't care what games they are. I will just try them out and just play them. If they seem fun, I will try it. If I lose, I would be like, I'm a noob at this. Uh, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call myself a gamer girl though, to be honest. I mean, I play games sometimes, but not all the time. Yeah, it's kind of back and forth for me. Anyways, arcade, let's go. I arrived at the arcade, ready to spend some cash on some fun games. I didn't want to be stuck at home on a Sunday. Besides, the arcade always had something new to play, no matter how often you came. I began to wander the aisles of machines, scanning over them to find a good game to play. I had played a lot of games already with Suzu, so it was just a matter of finding a good one. What finally caught my attention was a crowd of people surrounding a group of machines. Ooh, what are we doing? I got closer and peeked through the crowd to see Suzu sitting in a racing game versus two other players who were on the same machine behind Suzu's. From the looks of it, Suzu was losing and I was causing her angered face. Go, you go girl, I'm cheering you on. Come on, Suzu. You're going down. Kiss my Italian ass. Hey. <laughs> That's so hilarious, but you go girl, yes. I stifled a giggle, watching Suzu remain playful under, her, under stress. She was adorable but feisty, truly a spicy Italian. I observed as Suzu finally caught up to her opponents at Excuse me, and pass them with ease. What the? Hurry it up! <laughs> I love how their names are Moron and Jerk. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela, for naming them those things. <laughs> Later, losers! Hey! See you on the other side, suckers! I'm sorry. <laughs> the crowd began to cheer, watching Suzu beat out the, the guys and slide into first place. As the lights and sounds began to blare in celebration, the two jerks left the machine in a huff and Suzu stood up. Good game, everyone. Slowly, the crowd began to disperse, leaving me standing to applaud for Suzu alone. Suzu smiled as she finally saw me, walking over to me. Hey, what brings you here? I didn't want to be stuck at home, so I came here. I needed to have some fun after yesterday. Yeah, man, I get you. Yesterday was full of tightwad business guys and... Me and Naomi were pretty uncomfortable, too. 
Really? I'm really sorry about that. Suzu laughed and waved her hand in dismissal of it. She leaned against. She then leaned against the racing game and put her hands in her pockets. So what do you plan on doing here? I just want to have some alone time and play some games. Let's play. Let's play a game together. We need to hang out, girl to girl. After all, we're trying to do with Wu. <laughs> Let's play a game together. Oh really? What game do you think you could beat me at? I think we can do some major damage and beat our high scores and robot extermination. Suzu grinned from ear to ear, nodding before taking my head in hand and heading over to the machine in question. It was cute to see Suzu like this. She was always the adventurous type and I loved that side of her beyond anything. I guess that's what kept our friendship strong for so long. Eventually, we did reach a large machine covered up with images of robots, skies as animal mascots, and blood. We took a... We took up our plastic guns and swiped our game cards across the credit slot, giving our credits to the game to play. You take left, I take right? As usual, let's go! The game quickly started up and we blasted our way through hordes of robots, landing more headshots than professional shooter tournament players. Suzu and I had played this game so often, it pretty much had become our go-to go high score game. We always kept the top 5 spots on the leaderboard for ourselves. As we finished the level, first level though, we were stunned to see the new leaderboard at the loading screen. Someone took number one? Aw, oh, hell nah. We maxed that level, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, let's go. Suzu looked at me with a very familiar, deadly look in her eyes. She was determined to regain number one. So was I. I knew what this meant. No deaths, quick reloads, and constant headshots and Easter egg points. The whole experience itself ran two hours straight, with the main game and its sequel programmed into the machine. Once you finished one, you immediately began the second, the next until you reached the end of the second game. At least it had some cutscenes to take breaks between. It'll be tough, but we got this. Suzu nodded before putting her game card in the, in the breast pocket of her jacket and readying herself for the next level. I braced myself for a long game. Hey Anderson, let's make this a little more fun. Whoever has the least amount of headshots has to treat the other to lunch. Oh, you are so on right now. It's almost... Oh, okay. It's almost 2 p.m., Suzu. There's such a thing as late lunch. Oh, you are on, girl. All right, you're on. Second level, start. Has an and we were off. Virtual bullets began to fly across the screen, slamming into the heads of multiple robots and causing them to fall to the floor and die out. One by one, Susan and I burned through the game like our lives depended on it. We eventually had a crowd form behind us, cheering us on and offering us food so that we wouldn't have to leave the machine. Most of them were guys who, were, who liked the girl on gun action, but some of them were actually ex excited bystanders, hoping that we would take back our high score. Yes! We snapped a bit, taking breaks between cutscenes and level changes, but we remained true to our goal. Eventually, we made it to the final boss, a giant black bear robot with red eyes and deadly attacks okay let's go anderson right behind you the crowd behind us began to cheer as we began our final battle our legs were a little wobbly but we were too into the game to care all we cared about was a large red bar at the top of the screen slowly emptying with each bullet we fired into the boss's body we only had a few shots left when someone called out you girls suck Oh, shut the fuck up, man. I think we got this. Without missing a shot, Susan and I replied at once. You wish we did! You wish we did! Uh, I should have I should have said it at the same time. Oh, well. Before landing the final blow to our opponent, the death cutscene flashed and played on the screen. The scream of the robot bear booming through the speakers. Susan and I weren't excited just yet. We were waiting for the high score screen to appear. It was the final high score screen of the entire game, so it was the most important screen to our eyes. In our eyes. Come on, come on. New high score. The screen popped up, revealing our code C S C A as the number one score in the game, knocking down our mysterious NAL opponent to second place. The crowd behind us went ballistic as Susan and I hugged each other tightly in joy. It was like stepping over a major milestone, despite it only being an arcade game. We did it! Woohoo! The second stats screen came up, separating Susan and I from our hug and delight. In matters of accuracy, I was better. 
However, Suzu had more kills and headshots, making her the winner of our little bet. Booyah! Free lunch! Oh, shut up. <laughs> all right, all right. Where to, boss? I just want some drive through food. I've been eating way too many home-cooked meals, man. I need at least one unhealthy meal. Um, sure, whatever. Suzu's family was indeed an Italian family, but they were very self-conscious about their food. They were quite possibly the healthiest family I knew. Susan and I left the arcade, occasionally stopping to be given praise to, to be given praise or be asked a question when, about our gaming skills. We eventually headed out to the parking lot, where a decently used Jade motorcycle sat with chains around its wheels. Do you got a motorcycle? Susu quickly took off the chains and took a seat on the bike, getting out two helmets, placing one on her own head, and ushering me to sit behind her. Dude, that's awesome when i was younger i really wanted a motorcycle but then i heard stuff so i was just like i'm just gonna get myself a small car you know i followed her gesture and made myself comfortable on the leather, leather seat behind her putting her on one of the helmets and wrapping my arms around her waist Woo! i had ridden with her on a motorcycle before so this was nothing new to us Suzu rubbed the engine and quickly sped out of the lot, driving into the streets towards a fast food joint. Does Paradise Carlo sound good? I'd love some Paradise Nuggets and cheese fries. Alright. Yeah, sounds good. We went through the drive through Oh, sorry. We went through the drive through and ordered meals for ourselves before heading to my home. Suzu parked in the front, wanting me to dismount from her bike. Thanks for late lunch. Might as well be dinner now. Suzu and I laughed. It was funny how time flew by. Uh, want to stick around and eat together? Huh? Oh, nah, man. I gotta head back home and watch Francesca while my folks meet up with some bigwigs from the casino. Oh, okay. See you in school, then. Thanks, though. See ya! I waved at Suzu as she quickly headed out of the gates and back home. I smiled as I watched her go before heading back inside. Susu stuck around in my mind for a little longer than expected, but I couldn't help but smile. Okay, passing all of that depressing shit where the boys leave and we give up our memories and all that crap, here we are. I'm gonna cry. Again. Okay. I scooped up my bag and headed downstairs to the dining room. The room was empty and I felt hungry. I needed to eat something. I looked to my phone and saw a text I must have completely forgotten about. Dude, are you okay? Did the drive home yesterday go okay with your dad? Uh, uh how do we explain this when our memories are erased? Um, <laughs> oh, whatever. I tried to remember, but for some reason, yesterday's event seems blurry and almost blank. I remember going to school, dealing with Lisette, then going home. Excuse me. I don't remember, however, even ever being picked up by him. I must have been, or else I wouldn't be safe at home. I rubbed my head, trying to shake out, shake out exhaustion. Damn studying. I sighed and texted back. Sorry, I forgot to text you back. Everything was fine. See you when you get here. I made myself some quick toast and coffee, needing a jump start. I felt drained and I did not want to fall asleep in class. Something bothered me, though. My house felt empty, or at least emptier than when I came here. Couldn't put my finger on it because the boys are gone and we can't remember. That's why you feel empty. Let's just go. I finished my food, washed to the front, waiting for Naomi's car, confident nothing was going to happen. I avoided talking about what happened yesterday. I'll be riding with you guys from now on to and from school. As we entered the school, we quickly gathered things. Head to class, no events. Uh, Naomi and, took, and Suzu took their seats, as usual. History was in this point. It's like, and how makes, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Suzu seemed to be very tense, focusing, focused on her, on her desk more so than usual. I was almost tempted to poke her and see what was wrong. My phone, though, vibrated in my pocket. Thank God I sent it on vibrate before class. I pulled out my phone and checked it, seeing a text from Naomi. I began to text back, suddenly going into a text conversation. Hey, do you know what's wrong with Suzu? I don't know. Oh, I hope she's okay. She looks so stern. Same here. I looked over once again at Suzu. 
She was intensely scribbling in her notebook, almost obsessively slow. The grip on her new-looking purple pencil was almost tight enough to bend it each stroke she made with it. I will explain the purple pencil after we finish Susie's route. Because I don't want to deal with this. Oh, by the way, did you hear? What? Apparently, Suzu's family is really involved with the mob. My dad told me he saw Suzu's dad in court this morning with a big-time crime boss. Oh, shit. Suzu, are you going to be okay? Really? I couldn't believe it. Was Suzu okay? I looked over her once more. Something made my heart slightly skip at seeing her again. I was worried, yes, but for some reason I felt a little sad. Suzu had always sworn up and down that her family had no relations with crime lords, yet this happened. Why was this happening? I put my phone back into my pocket, ending the conversation. Hopefully Suzu would explain things to me soon. I was worried beyond belief about Suzu's position with her family. Time continued until the end of class period in the exact st in that exact status. Suzu held her tense ground, focusing on nothing but the incoherent scribbles on her paper while Naomi and I watched on in worry, not caring for the class we were in. At the, as the bell rang, Suzu stood up suddenly. I gotta go. See you guys later. Yeah! Don't go! Suzu zipped out of the class like she was fleeing the devil himself. What just happened? I don't know. Chase after her, duh! I needed to see what was wrong. Suzu was important to me and I needed to help her. I instantly grabbed my things and rushed out of the room. Whoa! Where are you going? Hey! Bye, Naomi! Sorry. I love you, Naomi, but right now, gotta focus on the Suzu. I wasn't listening. I needed to get to Suzu. The hall was full of students, which made spotting Suzu a little harder. I wish she was just a little taller. Suzu. I began to push through the crowd, trying to find a trace of her. Her hair, her jacket, anything. I managed to get a glimpse of her green jacket, instinctively following it down the hall into the into a classroom. Suzu's class was the other way. Where was she going? I continued following and peeked into the classroom, seeing no one else in there except Suzu. What shocked me was seeing Suzu stand over an empty desk, slamming her fists onto the wood. I didn't know what to do. The world, around, the world behind me in the hall went into slow motion as I stared at Suzu's back. She obviously wanted to be alone, but I wanted to help her and fix whatever was bothering her. Go and help her, dude! I couldn't leave her like this. I, qu I quietly stepped into the room and closed the door, making Suzu flinch and freeze up. Suzu? Suzu gasped before turning to me, a shocked expression on her face. Tears had pained her cheeks, which made my heart sink in my chest. Girl, come here! You need hugs! Suzu, what's wrong? It's nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Suzu quickly rubbed her eyes and face, trying to cover her face and clean it of sadness. I pressed my lips together, not believing her. Suzu, talk to me. You were acting strange in history. I was just listening to the lecture. You were scribbling in your notebook. I was watching almost the entire class period. I have bad handwriting. That was true, but she wouldn't write notes about class. She didn't care much for class, unlike Naomi and me. Why was she lying to me? What was going on? What was making her so distraught? Suzu, whatever is troubling you, let me help you. You can't help me, okay? Okay, I'm sorry for trying to help. Okay, bye. I stepped back, feeling the sudden anger in her voice. She covered her mouth, regretting what came out of it, and stared almost in pure fright at me. Suzu. I stepped towards her, not wanting to scare her, but wanting to be closer. Suzu did didn't seem affected, so I continued to walk towards her. Eventually, we were only a desk away from each other. Tell me. Suzu stared before letting out a shuddering sigh, nodding in defeat. I slowly took a seat in the desk in front of me. Watching as she moved to stand in front of it. I've been having some issues, okay? Issues? What about? I'm supposed to help out the casino after graduation. Isn't that good? It's a job, so it'll pay. Yeah, pay. In blood money. Blood money? What do you mean? 
Is... Is something going on with the casino? Yeah, I get the pleasure of being a true Italian. Oh, dear. What do you... But what do you mean? Well... My dad's always wanted to own a casino, but my dad's an immigrant and whatever, so language barriers kept him from doing that. Luckily, my mom's pure Chicagoan, and so she knows English. When they opened up the casino together, I thought it'd be a great experience. But it wasn't, was it? A couple of suits showed up to our house last night. Mafia suits. Claimed that we were under protection as part of the Capone family. No way! Suzu! Look, I knew my family was a little messed up, but to be related to Capone was beyond crazy. My mother swore up and down that she had no relation to them, but... Apparently, through a marriage and a couple contracts, we're technically part of the family. Oh dear, Lord Suzu! Even if it isn't true, they made my folks sign out a protection license. It was crazy. Al Capone was a Chicago mobster Robin Hood, but knew how to keep a family together. I never knew Suzu's family was so involved. With Suzu so protective of her family, it was no wonder she was upset. She preached so often that her family wasn't involved in things like that. Even Naomi defended her. I had to stop. This wasn't helping Suzu. I needed to help her feel better beyond anything else. So what happens to you? Nothing. We pay a part of our profit to the family, and we're protected. <sighs> protected my ass. It's bribe money to make sure we don't lose business or get bombed. Susu stared down at the desk between us, her hands tightening into fists. This is bullshit. I was gonna be normal, I was gonna be happy, I was gonna finally be normal enough to ask you out! Oh my god, Suzu! Oh, that That's kind of cute. It just slipped out and... Th Oh, Suzu, you need hugs. I felt like I was dreaming. What? She wanted to ask me out? Huh? When? How? Excuse me. Suzu covered her mouth and stared up at me, as if she had slapped me and regretted moving her hand. I stared, lost in my own thoughts. Suzu pounded the desk with her fists again. Fuck! This is great! Just great! Just turn around. Okay. I stood and turned around, obeying her, lost in my own train of thought. I needed to do anything I could to help her subconsciously. I could hear Suzu grumbling to herself. This is stupid. Stupid! You just... You might as well go. I mean, this is... Good. No, Suzu, come on. I need to give you hugs. Suzu groaned. I could feel her mixed emotions radiate onto my back. I felt myself step forward, away from Susan. in reaction. No! No! Quickly, though, Suzu grabbed a hold of my vest. I froze, breaking from my own thoughts. I like you. I really do, okay? I felt my heart flutter and flattery. Suzu, one of my best friends, liked me. I wasn't sure what to say. Suzu grip, Suzu's grip on my vest tightened, pulling me slightly. I wanted to turn and hug her, but right now, she needed to let her emotions out. I like you, but I don't want to ask you out like this. I don't want people to think you're affiliated with the Mafia, kid. This whole situation is just messed up and... Hey, no, it's okay. I will date you whether you're Mafia or not. Because I love you. I felt my heart drop. She cared about me and wanted to protect me from her reputation. I was flattered, but at the same time, I was angry. She was my best friend and she liked me enough to confess her feelings to, to me, despite her situation. What could I say to her, though? This was a huge deal for both her and me. She had been one of my best friends for the majority of my life, and here she was, confessing to have a crush on me. It was surreal, yet it made me feel both strange and fluffy. Susan sighed and let go of my vest. I turned around to see her run her fingers through her hair. Look, I'm sorry. I guess I needed to vent. I feel better now. I couldn't help but stare at Suzu longer. Was she not expecting me to say anything in return? A sentence bubbled in my stomach, forcing itself out of my mouth without filter. And uh, go out with me! I did not know what came over me. I let it spill out. I liked her, though. I liked her a lot. She was badass and cute in her own special way. I loved that. 
She was an individual and stayed true to herself no matter what Naomi or I did. Sure, she was a little aggressive, but that added to the charm. Susu stared wide-eyed at me, blushing as red as could be. I was positive that if she blushed anymore, she would faint from all the blood rushing into her cheeks to color them that red. Did you just- Yep, I did! I did- Yes, I did. I stepped forward and gently took Susu's hand. I needed her to know how I felt. She poured her feelings out to me. It was more than fair to shame the- uh, uh, it was more than fair to share mine with her. I really like you, too. You're adorable, and I love that about you. You're caring and fun, and you have this sort of... Charm. Suzu, will you go out with me? Suzu was completely red in the face, but her eyes started to water. Rogue tears dripped from the edges of her eyes, and she almost glared at me. <laughs> but what about... I don't care. We'll deal with it as it comes. But for now, I want to be with you. Truly. Susu stared before rushing at me, hugging me tightly, burying her face in my chest. I held her, wanting to comfort her. I felt a small part of my heart filled with pure joy. I felt happy like nothing was going to stand in our way. Months went by since Susu's confession. We were happily and eventually graduation came along. The rest of the story could almost be passed over. I graduated from school as one of the top 10 students of my class. My family was proud, even my dad. Maybe it was because I did my best. Maybe it was because I was a woman in his eyes. Suzu, my girlfriend, went to work at the casino right after school, learning both security and machine design. I guess her love for video games drew her interest into slot machines. Soon, she was able to fix broken or hacked machines within mere moments. As for her family, they weren't afraid of the protection they had, but they were cautious with every business meeting they had with bank ba big wings. Suzu would often drag me to the arcade to blow off steam if something went wrong. But what of my future? Well, with Suzu's support, I finally decided to stand up for myself. After I graduated, Andrew and I presented our cases and the board decided to have Andrew step into the CEO position of the Anderson Toys Company. My father was beyond shocked. I congratulated Andrew, went to University of Chicago. Andrew vowed to respect the wishes of the late CEO. He had a large amount of heart, so it was easily accomplished. My grandfather would have been proud to see how Andrew helped to shine. With the position filled, my father had no choice but to let me decide my future. No longer would I have the future scare me in a quarter, blah, blah, blah. That being said, I was still scared. Didn't want to help Andrew. Would I want to venture on my own? Suzu reassured me that she would support me and help me through whatever I decided to do. I was grateful I would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could shake me down from that happiness. One morning, I woke up and took in all that had happened as if it were all a dream. My life seemed to fall perfectly into place. It was almost surreal. Is everything as you wanted, sweetie? I don't have time with you. I don't have time to deal with you and how you cat caught the boys and brought them back and wiped their memories. I don't have time for your bullshit, Diana. Please get out of my sight. <sighs> I hear her voice echo in my mind before I heard the snapping of a pencil, breaking my thoughts. What was I thinking about? Oh yes, my life. I let my mind wander to the f my future before my phone started to ring started ringing. I instantly picked it up. Hello? Hey, can I come over? Sure, girl. What's up? Yeah, sure. What's wrong? I just need to see you, okay? Sure. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I grew worried. What was wrong? Did something happen? My mind began to sort through possibilities that could have occurred with Suzu. Soon enough, I heard Suzu's motorcycle pull up to the gate. I rushed to the front doors and opened them to see Suzu looking at me with seriously distressed eyes. Tell me you love me. Um, I love you? What? Suzu, what's... Just tell me. Okay, all right. I love you, okay? You love me? I love you. I love you a lot, okay? Now what's... Before I knew it, Suzu rushed to me and held me tightly. I gasped but wrapped my arms around Suzu, trying to comfort her despite my confusion. She obviously needed some love right now. I would get my answers when she was okay. I love you too. I never felt like this with anyone. Aww. Cute. Shh. It's okay, Suzu. It's okay. I held her close, petting her head gently. When Suzu relaxed in my arms, she looked up at me, tears in her eyes. My parents want you to come over for dinner. Really? That's nice. I I'd love to come. Wait, what? My parents want to meet you as my girlfriend. They were shocked when they found out you and I were together, and 
It's really embarrassing, and I don't want you to feel pressured, but they're serious. And now that they're connected with the mob, then... Oh. Suzu. Shh. I placed a finger over her lips, making her stare up at me in surprise. I would love to have dinner with your folks as your girlfriend. I'd do anything for you. Suzu smiled wildly up at me, more tears falling down her cheeks. She wrapped her arms or her arms up under my arms and kissed me lovingly, surprising me. As soon as she did, though, she pulled away. I... I... I didn't mean to. Feeling bold, I grabbed her hand and pulled her back to me, wrapping my arms around her and kissing her with the same amount of love she gave me. She was shocked, but I felt her relax in my arms. She kissed me... As I felt her relax in my arms, she kissed me back. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this woman in my arms. There were no words to, that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high, all at once. Here I was, holding the woman I wanted to be with like nothing else mattered. I vowed to cherish her and love her for the remainder of my days and beyond. And that was my happily ever after. And Suzu's love. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I'm just stretching. No stuffy and what Okay, yeah, okay. I was gonna explain about the purple pencils. What my theory is, and I don't know. Uh, and I think the purple pencil has to do with Diana because, as we've seen, she kept twirling a purple pencil whenever she met us, like, is everything you wanted? And all of that. And she's like, I just, I just came to pay back the price. I'm like, are you. Are you, is she saying that she caused all this just so we could, so I could get the guy or the girl of my dreams? She, did she make Naomi change her sexuality? Did she let her, Susan's family get involved with the mafia? What? Diana, that's just cruel and underhanded. So yeah, that's what I think. I think she did. I think Diana changed the fate and stuff so we would be happy. And I'm just like, that's just no. That's a big no, no, no. Okay, with that out of the way, we are finally done with the Seduce Me series. And I will start doing the bad boys. The bad, the bad boys. Bad boys. <laughs> what am I saying? Sorry, I will do the bad endings for the boys and Seduce Me too. You can, there's still, the vote is still up. So you, ugh. yeah, the poll is still up. So click in the link. Click the link in the description below to vote. And so far, Sam is still in the lead. So if you don't want Sam and you want any other boy, please go and click below. Vote now. You have, I don't know when, uh, when the next episode that I put up might be the, the bad endings. But I don't know. It's spoopy month. I wanted to focus on some scary games, but... And whatever is okay with you guys, I'll probably make a, I'll probably most likely make a video tomorrow about it, asking you guys for your opinions. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so anyways, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos, then click subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! I'm probably gonna play James or Eric's route, but anyways, yeah, okay, bye!